Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about fitting and modifying images specifically in Adobe InDesign. As we all know, Adobe InDesign is a layout program and when we're using images in a layout program, we need to make sure that they are placed the way we want them, placed in the type of frames that we want and the size that we want. So we're gonna talk about all of your different fitting options and how to modify or transform your different um, images today. So let's first start with talking about frame types. When you use your tool over here, you do have just kind of your rectangle frame tool, which is great. I use this a lot as a lot of you have kind of listened to me talk about to lay out my design to ensure that I have everything you know, planned before I start building. I don't like to just kind of go in and start placing things. I like to figure out my layout first. So I use the frame tool quite often in Adobe InDesign, excuse me, the rectangle specifically, the F tool. However, there are other types of frames as well as we well know. Now, sometimes we default to the graphics frame type, which, and I know it's a graphics frame type because it has a large X here, but sometimes I need it to be a text frame before I start putting in information. One of the things that you are able to do is to right click on a frame and one of the choices on your menu here is content. And you can change these to either graphic, text, or unassigned. Unassigned is blank, text is also does not have the X, but it changes the look of it and we see that we've got the type kind of orientation here on our frame. So knowing how you can flip those is a really great thing to be able to do. And that's just a simple right click on your mouse. Um, you also can get to it through the object content as well. So just make sure you know how to flip these at the top. The second half of this page, I've given you a series of different images that I drew in Adobe Illustrator for you all to be able to use to manipulate. When we drag in an image in InDesign and place it inside of a frame, which you saw in the placing assets activity, one of the things that you should have noticed is the image is going to come in in lots of different ways. But if you place it inside of a frame, we don't always see the entire image right away. And we have to ensure that we have fit our content the way we need to inside of our frame. So again, if we right click, we have a fitting option and we have all these different choices. It's also located under the object menu. Again, right above the content we just looked at. But what I'd like you to do on this one is go through and see how the image changes based on the setting you choose. So if I'm gonna fill my frame proportionately, it's gonna keep my design here, my little um, thing, equal width and height, and it's not gonna distort anything. But on this one, if I say fit content proportionately, one of the things I want you to notice is on this one, if I double click, it's not every, and not everything is showing on this one, but if I double click and I'm gonna right click, excuse me, and say fit content proportionately, maybe I should actually select the image first, fit content proportionately, you're gonna see, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see this, my frame here is this green, and there's nothing showing, there's nothing showing in this part of the frame because the image that I've given you, this retro camera, doesn't fill the frame fully, but it kept my image proportionate. So that's important to know. This one's really nice. This is a great one. This one is content aware fit. Adobe is smart enough and the programs have become smart enough to recognize what is in your image. So I've got these, this peony image that I drew in Illustrator and it is smart enough to recognize that a lot of this image is blank and it can figure out what the subject is, probably in my opinion, based on algorithm around colors. So when we do content aware fit, it's going to determine what should be centered and make it fill the frame proportionately. And it's gonna just show what it needs to show. Now, if you click, here's this edge here, this is where else the image shows. And I can kind of move this and rearrange this. So it's not filling up the whole image because if you look, my image here is tucked in the right hand corner and not centered like maybe we think it is. So that is a great one to use. Now it's not perfect by any means, but it does a pretty nice job 
um, of figuring out what the subject should be. You can try it with a series of images. These are just kind of experiment ones for you to see what things do, but try that one first, in my opinion, when you're working on placing and fitting your images and see how you feel it. You ha can, however, center your content as well. And that one's right here, center content. And it's gonna just center the image. You'll notice that if you see the difference, that's why I did these two back to back. See how the image is not in the center, like the main subject, because it just centered the entire image. Didn't matter what the content was. We're also going to fit content to frame. So I'm gonna say fit content to frame. And on this one, I want you to watch what happens. So we know what this camera image should look like. But when I do this one, fit content to frame, look what it did to my image. It warped it. It changed the proportions of it because it was more concerned with maintaining the frame on fit content than what was in it. The last one is fit frame to content. So this one you have to be careful of because if you have a really large image, it's going to automatically populate the frame to the size of the source image. So when I do this, this one I gave you kind of a smaller image to see, but it changed the width of the frame to maintain the proportions. So knowing how to use these is going to be a great skill. The last one here is clear frame fitting options. So that's a great one that you can choose. So I'll do it on this one where you can see where it definitely changes it. Clear frame fitting options. And it's just going to take away those kind of um, any kind of presets that you have. The last thing you have under here is fitting frame options where you can actually pull up a dialog box that gives you lots of different choices here. You can determine how much you want to crop as well as where you want to align from. Do you want to align from the top of the image, the middle, the bottom? You have all these different choices and you can change that alignment and that fitting based on what corner or what area of the image you want to adjust. So that's a great one. Um, so if I say fit content proportionally on this one, I've got my preview turned on, but if I want it to be from the top, see how it moves or from the bottom, from the right, from the left, centered, which is usually the one I prefer. Um, and then I can also crop, you see it's zooming in, which is nice. Um, the other thing you want to do is on the crop amount is leave this turned on. It keeps all of the left. It keeps everything equitable if you want that. Now, if you just want to crop the left and the right, you can just turn that off and adjust these separately. Page two. Page two is going to have you go through aligning um, objects. I've chosen just to give you frames to work with. You can see that they're graphics frames because they have that cross in them and I filled them up with color just to help give you directions. I'm not going to go through this one specifically other than to explain to you to make sure you remember what a key object is. We learned this in Adobe Illustrator and it's the same concept in Adobe InDesign. A key object, if I click on multiple things and I'm going to do just a couple here just to kind of show you, my align panel automatically pops up on my properties. Remember that anytime we select different things for different purposes, our properties is going to adjust. So the align pops up automatically with all of my different choices and I can align to select objects, key objects, which we're about to talk about, margins, pages, and spread. So we do have some more choices than we did in Illustrator because the margins weren't set in Illustrator like they are in a document program. And I have all the same top, bottom, right. And I also have all my distribute as well where it's going to help me with my even spacing. But I also have this other choice that I haven't had before where I can do the space changing and I can set how much space I distribute my objects with, which is really nice. So these are some good ones to experiment with. Don't work harder than you need to. Let the program do the work for you. However, let's just make sure we know what a key object is. When I have multiple objects selected like I do here and I click once more on a single object, this becomes my key object. You should notice that my align and automatically change to align to key object. This is now the object that everything is going to be aligned to rather than the document or the margins or just to the selection. Sometimes it'll just pick, the program will pick which one it wants to align to based on the choice you made. So for example, if I chose these three without a key object and left aligned, it's gonna left align to the blue because that's the furthest left. But if I do bottom, it's going to do to the blue again because it's on the bottom. If I do right align, it's going to do it to the yellow this time because that was the furthest to the right. But if I want everything to be top aligned to 
um, this pink instead, which is not the most top. And I select just the pink. And then I do a range to top. Everything's going to revolve around the, the key object, which happens to be the pink frame that I've chosen. So that's a great one. If you know you have something placed exactly where you want it to be in your document, there's no reason for you to worry about rearranging if you can lock that one down by making it a key object. I've got just a quick five sets of directions for you to get this kind of rearranged just to have some practice with using that align panel in InDesign. You also can transform your graphics as well. So I've given you a series of instructions here just to kind of help you. And again, we can right click here to go to the transform section, which is where we're going to focus, or you have it under object transform. You also have a transform again, where it'll do either again, individually or sequences, which is really nice. You also have your range options here to bring things to front and back. And you also have your select options, which is kind of nice, is first above object, next above object. You can kind of choose the things in a stacking order when you select things. But we're going to focus on just kind of transforming stuff and changing stuff. So I'm going to transform and I'm going to do my rotate this time and I'm going to set it to 90 degrees. Again, if I set preview, it'll show me the rotation. And in addition to rotating this, I can also make a copy of things if I want to, which is kind of nice so that if I don't want to adjust and I want to make a copy. So we're going to rotate that one 90 degrees. You also have the ability to scale your objects and determine your X and Y scale. So I've said to 200% and I'm going to actually type this in once and it's going to automatically go into my, my second because again, these are constrained, they're linked. And then I'm going to say, okay, and it's going to rescale my camera here. I'm going to move this as well. If you have a very specific amount of increment that you want to move, I'm going to move this one inch by one inch and it's going to move it for me. And I know that sometimes we can just grab it and move it. But if you have a very specific amount of constraint, you want to move something and you want to ensure that everything's being moved the exact same amount, everything needs to shift over one inch because of margin issues. This is a great way to do it effectively. We can flip things horizontally and vertically, which is really nice. Um, they are, of course, different depending on what you're trying to do. Remember that horizontal is going to be on the horizon where vertical is going to be up and down. The last one is the ability to shear. And we're going to transform shear. And you can set the amount of degrees. Now, I've already just said 15 degrees on, and I'm going to move this out of the way. Oh, I can't. Um, on the horizontal axis. Um, and this just shows you that you can transform things by almost like italicizing your images where it's just kind of like, Joot! and you can also change this to a negative number if you want to go the other way, which is nice to know. Negative 15. See, it goes the other way. Um, so that's just a great thing. You can do this on images, text boxes, frames, graph, you know, anything you can think of, you can shear your objects. A couple other things that are in here as well that I didn't show you is just the ability to rotate things 90 degrees clockwise, counterclockwise, or 180. Those are some pretty norm things that we do on the regular basis when it comes to images and graphics. So that's just presets for you as well. Hopefully you've learned a little bit more about how to use your images more effectively in Adobe InDesign. Make sure that you save your worksheet, last name, first name, period. And for today, it is fitting and modifying and turn in. Thanks, friends. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.